Hello everyone, my name is Jim White with Intertech, and this is the first of an eight-part collection of tutorials on spring integration. In this first part, we want to understand spring integration components in general and talk a bit about channels. Essentially, in a spring integration system, or for that matter, in any enterprise application integration system, there are three different types of components. We have producers, otherwise known as senders, and consumers, otherwise known as receivers. And these two high-level components need to communicate with each other. They do so through a pipe. Now in spring integration, the pipes are called channels, and the producers and the consumers are known as endpoints. And the communication occurs via what are called messages through the channel. So a producer would send a message to the consumer to either provide it with some data that it needs to know about or to let it know about some sort of event that has occurred. Spring integration applications are a collection then of endpoints and channels. Oftentimes, we chain these endpoints and channels together to affect an outcome. For example, let's say you have an application that provides customer data. And perhaps that customer data is provided in XML format. And there's some sort of consuming application that would like that customer data. But that consuming application would only like customers that have been contacted within the last year. In other words, it wants filtered contacts. And also, it would like to receive that information not in XML format, but in JSON format. Then a collection of spring integration endpoints and channels allow for both the filtering and transforming of that data message exchange. So a message in spring integration is actually a pretty simple structure. It's comprised of two portions, the header and the payload. A header of a message contains what I'll call system information. For example, it contains the timestamp of when the message was created. The payload, on the other hand, contains the data or event that's trying to be exchanged inside of the spring integration environment. In the last application example I gave you, the payload would contain that contact data that's trying to be exchanged between applications. Now there are many different types of message endpoints in spring integration, two of which I've already alluded to, filters and transformers. But there are many more to choose from to allow you to get data and or events in the form and the shape necessary for your applications across the various channels. Many more of the tutorials upcoming are going to discuss the various types of message endpoints in Spring Integration. What I want to focus in on in this tutorial are message channels. Generally speaking, in Spring Integration, we have two different types of message channels, pullable and subscribable channels. Both of these are backed up by an interface in Spring Integration. Now, there are many different implementation types of those two interfaces, and you can see a listing and a description of those types of message channels at the link you see on the page right now. When we diagram in enterprise integration pattern diagrams, message channels, we'll use the icon you see at the bottom of the screen. Now, pullable channels buffer messages, or at least allow for the buffering of messages in spring integration. When we say buffer messages, what that means is they have a queue that allows those messages to be stored until a consumer pulls or requests to receive the message from the channel. That queue usually has a capacity, if you will, a maximum number of messages that are allowed to be stored inside that queue. What also separates a pullable channel from a subscribable channel is the fact that a pullable channel is usually a point-to-point -point channel. In other words, it's allowing for one producer to send a message to one consumer typically. If there are multiple consumers, you don't use a pullable channel, typically. 
Typically, pullable channels are also used for sending what we call document messages. In other words, messages that contain data or information that some other application or component might need. Things like, for example, the contact information we mentioned earlier would be described as document messages. Subscribable message channels, on the other hand, allow for multiple subscribers, or if you will, consumers to register for messages. And the messages that are put into a subscribable channel are delivered to all of the subscribers. In other words, this is not a point-to-point -point type of message channel. This is a point, a producer, to many consumer type of channel. The messages put into a subscribable channel are delivered to all the registered subscribers of that particular channel. What also separates a subscribable channel from a pullable channel is that subscribable channels don't have a buffer, at least typically don't allow for the queuing of messages inside of the channel. Typically we use subscribable channels for what we call event messages. In other words, messages that notify other applications and components that something has happened in the producer of that message. Well, with a basic understanding of the various types of components in Spring Integration, that being endpoints and channels, and with a little bit deeper understanding of the various types of message channels, pullable and subscribable message channels in Spring Integration, I think you're ready to tackle lab number one. In this very first lab, we're going to give you a chance to configure and set up a Spring Integration application in Eclipse using Maven. And then, after you've done that, you'll get a chance to play around with the different types of message channels in Spring Integration. Again, specifically, subscribable and pullable channels. So good luck with lab number one, and stay tuned. Come back and visit us for tutorial number two, where we'll start to address the various types of endpoints in Spring Integration.